Uh, she's a timber construction, uh, uh, largely of oak uh, and uh, pitch pine, and she's nearly 100 years old, so some of that timber's uh, really starting to uh, uh, show its age, and uh, we're in the fortunate position to uh, have some funding, and we're going to be pulling her apart and replacing some of those timbers. Wow. How much of Rayburn will be original, and then how much will uh, be new? Well, Faye, it's, it's, she's going to be restored sympathetically. Uh, we're going to be uh, maintaining or re retaining as much original fabric as we can. She has a composite construction with a, a steel framework, and uh, that's allowing us to, uh, to do that, really. In, in terms of materials, uh, uh, we're going to be replacing quite a lot of deck planking, um, uh, up to about 700 linear feet, so it gives you some idea of of how much will be replaced. Uh, so here we're at the bow, um, starting at the very front. Uh, uh, we have uh, replaced the stem in the, in the ship um, some uh, 10 years ago now, but the planking behind that stem and, and the, the apron behind that, uh, which is holding the planks together, yeah. uh, that all needs replacing now. It takes a, a, lot of, a lot of wear the bow. Do you think that will be the more sort of challenging area to restore? It, it is, yeah. It's, it, all the, there's so much uh, shape going into, uh, into the frames at uh, both ends, actually. Um, it's, it's pretty straight through the middle. So, yeah, it, it is a very complicated task to, uh, uh, to take that apart and rebuild. The, the bow board uh, is unique to the, uh, or the decoration on it is, is unique to, to each barge. And uh, these will be uh, copied uh, exactly as the originals and that's basically going to be our, our policy throughout the barge is, is everything, all the work will be done as, as it was originally. As you can see, the, the capping rail is, is deteriorating quite badly and all that will be replaced uh, for the, the full length of the barge as well as the rail itself. So should we step aboard and have a look at the windlass? Yeah, that'd be great. So this is the barge's windlass fay. Uh, it's a, a very important piece of equipment. Um, it's used for raising and lowering the anchor as well as uh, raising and lowering the rig. Um, so how would you operate something like this? Um, we have uh, two big handles, one on either side, and, and uh, uh, either uh, or up to four people or two people on each handle. And yeah, as part of the restoration and, uh, and to enable us to access uh, Milton Creek, um, go with these, we'll be uh, fitting a hydraulic motor to this uh, windlass because um, it's, it's obviously it's, it's not always easy to get four people together uh, at any one time to, uh, uh, to pass under the bridge. And moving sort of further aft on the barge you can see uh, some of the damage to the deck here mostly caused through uh, uh, fresh water and, uh, and just wear, wear and tear generally. Um, the, 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 some of these deck timbers are, you know, our original timbers, are, uh, so they're a hundred years old. So, what's under the cover, Rob? Uh, well, this is the forecastle hatch frame. Um, it's based on the original one. Should we take the cover off? Yeah. Um, uh, the original one was made from a, a, a pitch pine, but it's been remade in teak. It's showing a little age, but this will all clean up, and we'll shoot on for many more, many more years. Yeah, it's just it's, it's much less likely to rot than the, than pine. It doesn't mind fresh water. So this is the mast case bay into which the mast sits and allows it to pivot. And you can see down here we've got quite a lot of rust. We're letting some metal into there and be as sensitive as we can to so as not to uh, lose the original. Uh, the original design. So what about the paintwork, Rob? We'll probably uh, shot blast all of that off and re repaint it. It's, it's, uh, it's just an enamel paint. Uh. Now this bar across here, Faye, it's attached to the mask case. Uh, this actually holds the, the lee boards to the size of the barge. What do the lee boards do? Um, well, they, they, they're lowered down and they're effectively the keel because the barge is a flat bottom vessel so that uh, uh, she can travel up uh, uh, shallow estuaries and creeks. Um, effectively, you have a, a keel on either side that you can lower down. So this is the main feature that you, you could see from quite far, isn't it, Rob? Uh, yeah, but the, the mast and the top mast uh, are nearly 100 feet tall. And what are they made of? Uh, th these are steel, and these are relatively recent. Um, the original would have been uh, uh, made out of 
timber. In fact, the, the spreet was made uh, from the uh, uh, turned down from, from the, uh, an old mast from a, a, a man of war, so it would have been possibly a couple hundred years old, a piece of wood. And these can also be lowered, can't they, in order to get into the bridge? Uh, yeah, that's right. They're lowered down on the windlass uh, that we were looking at earlier. And do all Thames sailing barges have lowered masts? Uh, yeah, they all have that, uh, that, that ability, yeah. Well, this is the four horse fay, and if, if you can follow me and come back here, um, I'll show you the main horse. It's also obviously going to be part of the restoration, as this one's completely rotted out. The main sheet from the mainsail comes down and attaches to this ring, so there's obviously there's a lot of power coming down through there when the sail's set. And it's obviously also can be a fairly dangerous place to stand where you are now. Um, and what will this be made out of once the uh, That will be a, a replaced uh, with oak. It will be a single piece of tree, a single piece of oak. So behind the main horse, we have the, the crab winches. There's, there's one either side. And are these are used for uh, raising and lowering the, uh, the lee boards. Um, they've always been a little bit undersized for the vessel, so we're going to be replacing these with a with a larger a larger winch. Oh, that looks like a fun job, Rob. Uh, yeah, well, being in the mud's all part of uh, barge life, eh? Well, here we go. Oh. Wow. What are you looking at there? Um, well, uh, a closer examination, although uh, the Ray Bell's rudder doesn't look too bad, she's had many, many repairs over the years, and, uh, and she's due for replacement as well. So what's the rudder made out of, Rob? Basically, it's made out of uh, oak. It's actually made out of several pieces, Faye, and, and then these are joined together with these steel bands. Up under the cover there, Faye, is the steering gear that's turning the top of the rudder and, and steering the barge. And how will you get this out to restore? Um, because it's so heavy, we're, we're going to wait till we get into the, uh, into the dry dock and they're going to crane it off there. Is that the propeller there, Rob? That is. That's, that's Raybell's propeller. Wow. Which is uh, obviously connected to Raybell's engine, and I think Matt's going to be showing you around the engine room. Ah, oh, nice to be out of the mud. So, this is Matthew. Can you just tell me about your um, connection to Raybell, please? Yes, my parents bought Raybell from the original owners, the Sully small shipping company, the Sully family, in the early 70s. And the barge was still carrying cargo in those days and, and it continued for several years while it had its, uh, its license to trade. Yeah, so that was my first introduction at the age of 12. Wow, age of 12, so it's been in the family for quite a number of years. Basically. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was quite nice that my father set up Raybell Charters as it went back into trade. So the name has kept running. There have been different managers, if you like, but uh, it means it's still effectively in the hands of the second owner. So, should we go and have a look down below? Absolutely. So before we kind of talk more about the restoration work in here, what was this area formerly used for? Well, called the Folksall, shortened from Forecastle, but Folksall is the way it's always pronounced. Um, in very simple terms, this is where the crew lived, as in not the skipper, but it would be the mate and the third hand. Hence, locker either side. There would have been here a black stove where, with an oven and a hot plate, which is where they'd cook. And on deck was a water tank, and that was really just as simple as it got. So what's this writing for here? Oh, well, it's an original beam from build in 1920, and you can still just make it out. It says certified for the accommodation of two seamen. And they were very strict on the accommodation. The bulkhead would be placed there because the crew's quarters had to be a certain size. 
the owners would want it as small as possible so they get as much cargo. But uh, yeah, they were very strict that it was comfortable uh, and good accommodation for two people. What would be the main bulk of restoration work that will happen within this area? Well, actually in here is the most complex and very time consuming job because all these uh, they're oak timbers about six inches square, all shaped. Uh, they're called the frames, and they start absolutely level with the deck and run down between the planking and the lining and right through under this floor, which is the bilge, which goes into the bilge. And they meet the keelson, which is the main backbone that runs through. So that framework, piece by piece, will be replaced. And as I say, it is, it is a the most skilled, especially where everything is meeting up in the bilges. Will all of it be new, or will you be trying to restore as much of the... The plan, yeah, the plan is to retain what's, what it's possible to retain. And this lining plank, you can see here, was taken out to inspect the quality. But we did know, and you can see the iron plate above, it's very rusty. There was a collision here in the 40s, I think that was. Um, so you can see where the frames have been doubled, it's not literally a frame every foot or so. So in the collision they dropped some new frames in, uh, replaced the covering board but didn't replace that. What you see of it there is in remarkable good condition but uh, it's usually the tops that go first where the fresh water gets in. So it's very likely that uh, although here they look good, they will all need to be completely replaced so we're, we're ready for that. The apron is another of the big tasks that will ca be carried out at this time. Um, again, original, and it's amazing how good it is considering that it is 100 years old. But it does have some shakes in it, and yeah, it's definitely time for it to be totally replaced. So that's the crew accommodation. This is the doorway that, of course, wouldn't have been there. Access was only through the ladder. And this is the forward bulkhead. Um, and from here, right back to the far bulkhead, was the cargo space. So when this was loaded with, say, 150 tonnes of wheat, often loose, that would be up to the top of the hatchboards. This is the forehold, uh, only defined really because between the forehold and the main hold, you have to have a place to hold the mast. Yeah. So that's called the mast deck or the sailing deck. And all these hatchboards, they still lift off, just as they, I mean, we've got a few electrics there, but you unhook things, you can lift the whole top off, kind of like a cabriolet, the car. <laughs> so in terms of the restoration, which areas are going to be um, restored in here, and which are going to be left as the original? Well, in here, the frames, the lining will have to be cut back to here, possibly. Mm -hmm. This stays, and it's in remarkably good order, that's the in-whale, but on the outside is something exactly the same the same thickness, four or five inches thick. Uh, so the outside, the outer whale, will be replaced and that's right round the barge, that's both sides, stem to stern. And then above that, the deck mostly replaced and certainly the deck where the mast sits, which is the most important, it takes the most weight, put it that way, and it takes an immense amount of tonnage when you're sailing. It's an extraordinary kind of huge dovetail that locks the so those corners, is that because of the elements that get in or is it just because of the weight that's, it's, why do they go? It's certainly the elements that get in as in the water, the fresh water that rots it. But when you have a boat which by its nature will flex, the whole hull will yeah. flex. Because you can imagine with 150 tonnes inside as well and in a, in a big sea, part of their strength is that they can move slightly. They were built with uh, a good life of 25 years of hard work. So. It's, it's worth remembering that though when you look at how well they've lasted really yeah, you think yeah. this is a hundred years old and yes it, it needs a lot of work but it's still it's remarkable time. yeah for, for the time it's come through. So the cargo hold extends from the forward bulkhead that we've effectively just walked through right the way through as far as you can see to just behind the stove which is the after bulkhead. In fact the original bulkhead from 1920 is about three feet behind that. That was a wooden bulkhead. Well, we're now in the main hold, and during the restoration, there's not a great deal that's being replaced here. Uh, the lining and in-whale and beams are largely original, and especially the iron beams, they're good order.
but uh, there are a few smaller jobs, um, as in this piece of in Wales, where it's the scarf joint is, original from the 20s again. Um, that will be cut back to where they find it's good and a length of possibly 30 feet replaced inside. And here is a feature that you don't see on many barges. It's actually a stage, just an old fashioned stage made in six sections. It lifts out very easily. But uh, in the 90s, uh, when I was managing the barge, I discovered that it was one thing to take, say, uh, 12 people or uh, whatever for a week's sail, which I'd grown up, you know, kind of learning that. But uh, for six months of the year, all through the winter, the barges sat there and any money that you can earn, that's one thing, to help with maintenance is a help. Uh, but also it is a fantastic venue to be enjoyed. First I put the stage in for a, a college experimental theatre uh, things and then we carried that on doing cabaret, other, other plays, acoustic music events and that kind of thing. So being removable was good because if someone wants to use the barge for a dinner they could yeah. or you could put the stage in and do something a bit theatrical with it. <laughs> Such a great entertainment space. Yeah, and it rolls off into this project mm -hmm. perfectly because there will be all kinds of events yeah. being held in here. So Matt, shall we have a look in the skipper's cabin? Yes, absolutely. So this is the skipper's cabin, but now dominated by the engine. So it tends to be called the engine room <laughs> for obvious reasons. This is the second engine the barge had. It went in in the 62, uh, Gardner, the Rolls-Royce of diesel, so it's been rebuilt and we're looking after it. The skipper's cabin originally, the bulkhead was down here, wooden bulkhead, and I've had descriptions from skippers that remember the original before the engine, which was in the 30s, so here was a big table. There were locker seats and uh, a bunk either side, and, it was a, and there was a door here into a little wash area and then the steps up. But uh, by all accounts, a very splendid affair because the owner had, it was kind of the pride of the Sully fleet, the first owners. And so they had a very beautiful skylight and this was really family accommodation when they took the barge on holiday each summer. So which would be the main areas of restoration in, in this area? In here, not a lot that's visible. The in whale and the lining is good. On the outside, again, this, what you see here, the, the kind of mirror of that on the other side of the frames is being replaced. Yeah. And what sits on top, the covering board and the rails are being replaced. But in here, there might be a beam end, I think perhaps in this corner, there might be one or two beam ends that would have uh, a scarf on the end. But generally, we're fortunate that it's, it's, it's all pretty sound, yeah. Uh, what happens next, Matt? Well, we wait for the shipwright, but in the meantime, we're preparing the dry dock, which you can see over there, which is, wow. in effect, another barge with a flat bottom made yeah. of steel. The ray bell will go into that and sit on the blocks, mm -hmm. a cover over the top, and then the shipwright will spend a year and a half doing the, the restoration of the hull and the deck. That's incredible. Rob, Matt. Thank you so much for showing me around today and I can't wait to see the finished results. <laughs>